What's up guys, CP Motor here back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build plan, a no frills gaming system to play just about any modern game at high and max 1080p settings at the most FPS you can get out of it. And it's actually a build that I probably would put together if I needed a gaming rig and didn't need to do anything else. If you're thinking of streaming or if you're thinking about video editing and photo editing, sure, you can get that job done as a lot of the things that goes into making a good gaming PC makes just a good PC in general, but this is all about trying to get the best FPS you can for as good price or FPS per dollar spent, which is what we're going on here. Sure, you can add an extra 50 or $100 if you want to get some fancy fans or a better looking case or some better upgraded visuals, but when it comes to aesthetics, we really didn't put much to it as we wanted to put the maximum amount of amount money uh, into our setup here. And for a system that's under $1,500, you wouldn't really want to be spending that much on the visuals department when you could just spend more on the actual hardware or itself. So let's go ahead and jump into that hardware that we're taking a look here. And for the CPU, we went with the Intel Core i5-8600. Ain't be thinking on a second. An Intel CPU trying to get the most out of your money? What are you doing here? Well, sure, it is a six core processor at 3.1 gigahertz, but the main reason why I did go for this over, say, an AMD offering is it does have better IPC. So yes, we are spending a bit more, but we are getting that better IPC, which in most games will go ahead and result in better performance. Uh, somebody could make the um, argument that you could just get an AMD chip and overclock it and sure, that is also to another really good option. But as we're only doing one plan, well, I went down the Intel path. At the same time, you could easily swap this out for a Ryzen 5, for instance, and get very comparable performance. So, hey, whichever way you want to go down is absolutely up to you. But for me, I did go down the Intel route uh, because of, again, it has slightly higher IPC. And also, too, if you did want to take advantage of some of the Intel technologies, hey, they're there. But uh, all in all, it is a solid package. And whichever way you go down, it's going to be absolutely fine there. Now. Uh, jumping into the actual motherboard for this guy, we went with the MSI B360M Pro-VDH. It's a solid board, and the main reason why we went down this particular path with this Intel chip and this particular motherboard is simply because we could save money by not going with the k skew from Intel, and that then in turn saves us a bunch of money. In fact, we were able to jump up another tier of GPU and get, um, well, the same type of performance. Now, yes, you can go ahead and grab yourself a K-SKU. You'll be spending more on the CPU and more on the motherboard. In our particular case here, I really do like to take that little bit of extra money that you spend on the higher-end CPU and higher-end motherboard and put it towards a higher-end GPU. Maybe in the future, if you upgrade to a future like 3080 or something, you may see some slight bottlenecks here, but honestly, a six-core CPU is not gonna be bottlenecking anything anytime soon. Now, RAM-wise, we are looking at a G-Skill kit. This is the Ares 16 gigabyte kit running at 2800 megahertz. It ticks all the boxes, it is at a decent price point, and all in all, it is really hard to complain about. Now, yes, the visuals aren't exactly the world's nicest looking set of RAM, but hey, again, why would we spend an extra 100 or $200 on just aesthetics when we're really not spending a huge amount on our system right here? Although I guess huge amount is a bit of a relative term. Anyway, moving on storage-wise, we did go ahead and grab ourselves a 500 gigabyte Crucial MX 500 and a four terabyte WD blue drive. Again, as this is not so much a content creation uh, computer, mainly looking for gaming, we can store all our key applications on the SSD like Windows, maybe Microsoft Office if you use that and whatever else you might want to install there. And we can go ahead and install a ton of games on that four terabyte drive. Although as each day passes and as each year goes on, uh, games get bigger and bigger, which means we might see that drive filling up. But four terabytes plus a 500 gig C drive, it's gonna be absolutely on point. And I have to say, just in general, for storage in 2019, it is absolutely awesome. If you're in the storage market, really, really cool. So I guess um, not too bad there. Now, video card wise, this is where I was kind of a little bit torn with the latest release of the RTX series. Obviously, everyone and their dog wants to jump on the RTX bandwagon, but in our particular case here, I did personally go down the 1660 Ti route. Now, yes, obviously the 2060 is gonna be giving us better performance overall, but I did go ahead and ask myself, how much of the time am I gonna be using a 60 class of GPU with RTX on? And the answer was probably actually never because of the performance here that we do experience. And if you were to set it on, say, low, for instance, 
and you're not going to be seeing the world's biggest difference. So I went ahead and saved around almost 200 Australian dollars by just jumping down to the 1660 Ti, if I can even say that number. We're still going to get pretty boss performance right here. It is a 60 class, which represents some of the best bang for the buck. Uh, again, sure, there is the AMD offerings, which, hey, if you wanted to jump down that road, absolutely go on that one. Um, but again, I went with the 1660 here again, just because it goes ahead and gives us good value for money. And we're not paying that huge RTX tax and not really getting that much for it. And again, I'm sure someone's going to point out that yes, the uh, 2060 is obviously going to be much better performance, but at the same time, it's two or three hundred dollars depending on which card you buy. And that's just an extra two to three hundred dollars we can save on our rig right here and put into video games. If you think about it, two to three hundred dollars worth of video games, it's quite a lot of video games versus a couple extra FPS. So for me, that's what I would definitely do right here. Uh, case wise, we went with the Cooler Master Master Box Lite 3. Uh, this is definitely an okay case. It does have a window. So if you wanted to bling it up with an extra fifty dollars worth of like LEDs and fans and lights and stuff, sure, you could go ahead and do that. Uh, but all in all, it's definitely going to be an okay case for what we're doing right here. Um, and then in terms of power supply, I do like to spend a little bit on my power supplies, but we did get a pretty decent price here, which was the Corsair VS450. It is a solid and simple power supply. It is non-modular. Um, but with that being said, it is absolutely a solid power supply. I've personally been running a VS450 in my server of all things for the past four years, and that's been run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, it's been absolutely on point. So for me, I'm gonna go down that road right there. Throw in a key for Windows 10 from someone like CDK offers for just a few dollars, and boom, we have a total fully ready to go gaming system for just 1,300 Australian dollars at the time of recording, or for my international friends out there, 800 US dollars. Keep in mind, Australian prices are really, really different from US prices, so 1300 here, around that sort of eight to 850 US dollars, which is a pretty bargain price for getting maximum FPS without spending a huge ton of money. Maybe you're just getting into video games, you don't have to drop a whole ton of money on this kind of a setup. Although 800 US, 1300 Australian, still pretty pricey, but it is a very good value for money, at least in my opinion. And on top of that, whilst it is mainly sort of a gaming focused system, because it is six cores, because it does have a decent GPU in there, we can do things like edit videos and also two photos. So if you wanted to get into that, you could. Or if you're into streaming, we've got plenty of CPU cores left over and a bit of RAM left over. We could easily stream some games over to Twitch or YouTube or wherever you want to go ahead and stream your systems. But guys, let me know down in that comment section, would you spend some extra money on this kind of a system for some RGB lighting? Personally, for me, I probably wouldn't, mainly because we're not spending a huge ton of money on the system. Although $1,300 is pretty pricey, especially here in Australia, but we're not spending a huge amount, like two or three thousand dollars. So, um, personally, I wouldn't really go down that road, but then again, that comes from someone who has spent fifteen hundred dollars on like aesthetics for their computer. Anyway, guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.